Hi everyone, I'm Shannon with King Family Farm and today I'm going to make some ricotta cheese because my kids go through these phases, I'm sure yours do too, where they drink all the milk and then they don't drink any milk. And so the milk I have is the better part of a gallon and it's going sour. So rather than toss it, I'm going to make some cheese with it. And, uh, and after that, then I'll be able to make maybe a ricotta cake or I might make a lasagna and then I've got some whey and I can use that to make bread. So we're just, it's the better part of a gallon. You don't want to use ultra pasteurized milk. It just, I, it's not something we really get here in Canada. I mean, I've never really seen it, um, but I know it's fairly common in the U S but so I've got a gallon, I guess it's four liters. We're Canadian. So of homogenized milk and uh, it's the better part of one. So I've weighed out or measured out um, here. I've got two quarts and I'm just going to see how much is actually in here. So I'm going to fill up my measuring cup here a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing here. This isn't an exact science. So we've got three quarts and I got some whipping cream that's on the edge of also expiring so I'm just gonna top this off it's not bad it's three and a half quarts close enough so I'm not quite gonna get um, like four cups of ricotta but we're just gonna pour this in the pot just like that and so what you need to do with this is heat it really slowly you don't want to scorch it you don't want to boil it so we're just going to take it up to temperature here i got a gas stove so we're just that's what that clicking is so we're just going to heat it up on medium and it takes about 20 minutes to do that and if you don't have a thermometer um, what you're looking for are little bubbles around the edge of the pot here and really steamy milk and that's about 90 degrees C um, I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit I think yeah not sure um, but 90 degrees Celsius that's what we're gonna heat this to and once it does that we're gonna turn the stove off and add some lemon juice and you can use fresh lemon juice you can use bottled lemon juice which is what we're gonna use because that's what I got um, and I'm going to put a teaspoon of salt in this. I like salt in my cheese, particularly I like salt in my ricotta cheese. You don't have to salt this if you don't want to. Um, when it's ready, it'll keep in the fridge for about a week. Um, so you've got about an extra week to eat this cheese up and uh, not waste your milk. And what you'll be able to do is you could serve that with fruit for breakfast if you wanted. It's really tasty. Um, again, you can make lasagna with it. You can make cake with it. Um, you could stuff pastries with it. It's really good. So it's just going to give me a little extra time to get through this milk and we're not going to waste it. And that's the key thing is I don't want to waste food. And it's so wild because sometimes my kids will drink a gallon of milk in like three days, be gone. And I've had this milk for almost two weeks <laughs> and they haven't touched it. So they've gone through, they've decided they don't want cereal for breakfast. And now they're having, um, now they're having, bagels or something else sometimes they like applesauce so all we're going to do is I'm just going to stir this occasionally just to keep it moving so you'll have to just figure out the right temperature on your stove I like mine on kind of like medium um, all stoves are different so we're not quite you know I can't really give you a specific on that but rather than waste waste milk is what we're going to do and uh, I thought you guys might actually like this now because I've added whipping cream to it and you don't have to add whipping cream if you've just got whole milk or you've got two percent right the amount of fat that's in your milk is going to determine um, how much just get some salt out here how it's going to determine how much um, curds you're actually going to get because the curds are the fat content all right <coughs> and my kids have shared the ick with me as well so I'm kind of fighting through that it is cold outside today guys it is 
I think it was minus 15 this morning. Let's see if I can open this with one hand. Lost my tripod. I don't know where I left it. But anyways, there we go. So we're going to put... So normally I would do a teaspoon for, again, on a milk. I'm going to do not quite a teaspoon because we're at three quarters. So we're going to... We're going to be sticky on the salt. So it's not quite... Whoop, there we go. It's not quite... And we're just going to sprinkle that in there. Don't be afraid of salt, guys. Salt is flavor. It's really hard to over-salt things if you're um, salting things at home. When you're doing um, processed foods, that's where the sodium... I'm not really sure on the science of it. I know I've read it, but they're able to actually pack so much more sodium in it that you can get than, than you can get in it by salting your food at home. So this is part of having a Whole Foods kitchen and uh, so making your own cheeses and stuff. But you can make with a regular, without anything fancy, just this is 3% milk, 3.25 sorry, whole milk, you can make ricotta cheese, um, you can make mascarpone, you can make, um, and you can make cream cheese without anything special. You just need milk and uh, some lemon juice, you need an acid and some heat, and that's it, guys. So, I mean, if you want to get into making mozzarella, then you need like a rennet. Um, but you don't need anything fancy to do this. And this, I'm, I don't even have cheesecloth. I, and what they sell today as cheesecloth is way too holy to be, it's got, it's too open of a weave. So I'm actually going to drain this through, um, probably like a flour sack towel. I usually use a tea towel and, uh, because that way I don't lose my curds. And, uh, but the way, if you're into making smoothies for breakfast and you want to add protein to your smoothie, adding that way will add protein so you don't waste that either you can use it to make breads there's just so many things you can do with it that's actually warming up fairly quickly so um just get my thermometer here so making your own cheeses and not wasting food very much part of a whole foods kitchen so the book i really enjoy for that is a book called Nourishing Traditions. And um, I'll put a link to it down in the show notes. But Nourishing Traditions was written by Sally Fallon. And um, it's got all kinds of stuff on how to make your bone broths and how to make basic cheeses and making your own mayonnaise and, and all of that kind of stuff. And I'm not saying that you should step away from all processed foods right away, but adding this stuff in slowly and learning these skills are really gonna help you in not wasting food because, I mean, who wants to throw away a gallon of milk? I don't know where you, where, what, how much it is where you are, but a gallon of milk here is $8.10. It's a lot of money to just pour down the drain. So, I mean, if you've got animals, you could feed that to the pigs. I'd rather eat it. Um, and, again, if you've got your whey and you don't want to consume the whey or use it, you can slop the pigs with that as well. So they'll, they'll enjoy the whey. It's good for them. So we're just going to heat this up. We're at, I've got my thermometer here. So I just have a really basic instant read thermometer. And of course it's in Fahrenheit. I'm going to change this to Celsius because I can't remember the, um, how much in, in Fahrenheit. So it's at 39 degrees, 40. We're getting there. So we get this to temperature. We're at 52, 3, 5. It's coming. And I'm going to put a... You just see more of my kitchen. I'm going to put a dishcloth in a strainer. I haven't even cleaned up from uh, making the kids' lunches before they went out the door. So... Big steel bowl. 
but I was I was like, oh, I'm just gonna get that done. And I thought, oh, I'll turn the camera on. You know, somebody somebody might find this interesting, and it really is easy to make. So we just need a dish towel. So I like this one, it's, it's a bit stained, but it's really quite thin um, and it does the job. So we're just going to, there we go. Just gonna line the colander here. I made some grenadine yesterday. I found, um, so we have flash food here, which is really, um, once in a while there's something really good on it. So I was on flash food last week and they had a box of like 25 pomegranates for five dollars and i said okay so i made some grenadine and um which we'll use for mixed mixed drinks and um i'm also going to make some pomegranate molasses which is used in a lot of middle eastern cooking so i think people will uh will enjoy will enjoy that here so, and uh, it's a great way to get inexpensive food. And um, yeah, so if you haven't checked out Flash Food, check it out in your area. Uh, you might have it. It's not everywhere, um, but it's definitely worth, worth looking at to uh, sometimes you can pick up. I mean, if you're not, if you're in a city and you can't raise your own meat, you, you may be able to get some really good, high quality meats for a much less lesser price um, than you would... 65 then you would buying it direct at the store I mean if I'm buying meat at the store I'm not buying it unless it's 50% off so we raise we raise our turkeys we have turkeys ducks uh, chickens and rabbits and uh, we don't have anything bigger than that so for our beef we buy that off a neighbor and it's really good beef so um, but I have some I had ordered from flash food um, ground lamb, which ended up being $5 a pound, which here is really, really cheap, but we like it. So that's what we're going to do. And this is just getting there. Sixty-seven. We're getting there another 20 degrees so if you don't have an instant read thermometer I mean you don't have to spend a fortune on them you can go to Walmart and buy one and they're like somewhere between seven and ten dollars they're not not expensive and uh, the battery I mean I've had this one for three years I use it all the time and the battery in it has lasted that whole time and um, as much as I hate disposable things it's not worth me replacing the battery in it because it's, it's actually cheaper to just buy a whole new thermometer, and I probably will. Um, so that one's a digital. You don't have to use digital. You can get um, ones that clip on the side of the pot, and that's fine as well if that's what you have. A candy thermometer would do this just as easily if that's what you have. You know, you don't need real special tools. So, and if you don't have a thermometer, I'll show you what the milk looks like, and I think you'd be able to... Uh, I think you can make cheese without it. At the end of the day, I mean, people made cheese for centuries without a thermometer. So, it can be done. So, we're almost there. 87. 88. And we just want to keep this moving. Because I don't want it to scorch to the bottom of the pot. And you can see just around the edges here that the, the milk is starting to foam and there's steam coming off it. I hope you can see that. Um, but it's looking foamy on top. You really don't want this to boil. You just want to get it up to 90 degrees. We're almost there. There she goes. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn the heat off. And then we're going to add the lemon juice. And I'm not going to add quite as much as I had there. And then we're just going to stir this for a couple minutes. Sorry, guys. 
We're just going to stir this for a couple of minutes while the curds start to break. And you'll see it happen. It'll get chunky. You know when you when you've got actual sour milk, see the curds? There they are. And we're just going to stir this for a couple of minutes. And then we're going to put a lid on it. And we're going to walk away for 20 minutes. And then we'll come back and we're going to ladle these curds out into our into our uh, strainer that's been lined with the tea towel. See the curds? You can see them now. It's gone all chunky. So we're just going to keep stirring. You can, so I've turned my stove right off. Some people say to turn it on low and keep it warm. I don't find that's necessary with this type of cheese. Uh, with a mozzarella or a cheddar, you would want to keep it maybe going a little bit. But with this, no, we're there. Okay, so we're just gonna get that out of there and we're gonna put it on it. And that's gonna help it stay nice and warm. And uh, we're gonna come back in 20 minutes and ladle out those curds. So I did a bit of cleaning up and this has been sitting for 20 minutes. The timer just went off. So I'm gonna take the lid off and show you what it looks like. So. You can, it, it's actually almost like one big solid mass. If I push on it, this is like the biggest slot of spoon I have. You can see it's like one big mass. I really need to buy a bigger slotted spoon. But here we are. So we're just going to scoop out the bigger curds and into just like that. Get underneath it. Heck with it. I'm going to use my ladle. It's not ideal. But I'm just going to tip it on its side a little bit. And into... There, now you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, I don't actually have a really big slotted spoon. I don't make a huge amount of cheese. Um, mostly because I just, I don't have a cow. And milk, like I said, is $8 a gallon here. And I just, it's not affordable to buy milk to make cheese. So I make cheese like this when we're, when we have milk that's um, ready to go sour. Doesn't that just look fabulous? Oh, this just turned out fantastic. So part of the reason I'm doing this is it's just easier to um, get the curds out this way. This bowl's moving around. I'm so scared it's going to flip over on me. So because once I get enough of this out of here and the weight isn't quite so much, I'm just going to pick this up and pour it right in. So after we've done this, you can let the curd sit, depending on how creamy you want it. You can let it sit for to drain anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes. Just keep checking it. If you want a really dry ricotta, you could leave it. You could actually pick the towel up and hang it. And that would work really well. All right. See if I can find my oven mitt. My oven mitt seems to always have a new home. I'm not really sure why, but the pot is still a little bit warm because because of the gas stove. I find the handles on everything gets really warm. So I'm just going to pour this right through. Whoop. Helpful if I put the camera so you can actually see what I'm doing. And we're just going to let that drain right through just like that so and I'm just going to take my spoon and move the cheese to the center so and I like doing this over a nice deep bowl so that the bottom of the strainer doesn't actually touch the way that's in the bottom there we go 
I've made this lots of times. I've never actually tried filming it, so doing this one-handed is a little bit, um, you know what? That bowl's not quite deep enough. I'm going to put it back over the pot because there's so much whey in there. Isn't that beautiful? That's all nice, fresh whey. You can refrigerate that and keep it and just make all kinds of things with, with it. So we don't, you don't waste it. Don't throw it away. Like I said, if you've got pigs, you can send it out to the pigs. They'll like it as well. So we're just going to let this. My husband's already requested a lasagna. I told him what I was doing while I was, um, while this was sitting. And he was like, oh, you're going to make lasagna tonight? And I'm like, oh, I wasn't really thinking of it. I was thinking more of a cake. <laughs> so, because dessert, I mean. A lemon ricotta cake seems like a great way to use up some milk that's about to go sour. So now you can taste the cheese at this point and uh, decide if you want to, you want to see what I'm doing here, if you want to add some more salt to it. See, it doesn't take long. It depends on, on how thick you want it, whether you want to continue to drain it. I just kind of like to move it around a little bit just to give the way a chance to escape um you wouldn't really do this with like a if you were making a mozzarella or something like that i'm just going to taste this you know it doesn't really need any more salt um depending on what you're going to do with it like i'm going to do dessert with this i think so as much as he wants lasagna so i think we're gonna i'm not going to add any more salt because i want to make it nice and sweet so I'm going to let this sit for probably about five minutes, another five minutes, let it drain, put this in an airtight container uh, in the fridge. I'm going to let it cool down before I put it in the fridge. Um, and uh, that's it, guys. That's how you save your milk. So next time your milk gets a little chunky or it goes sour, don't throw it out. You want to make yourself some ricotta cheese. Just like that. It's fantastic. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? No special ingredients. Milk, salt, lemon juice. You could use white vinegar, but I prefer the lemon juice. And that's it. So next time your milk's going off, give this a try. Let me know how it works for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you next time here on the farm.